Broadcasting from the Any Hour Services Podcast Studios, I'm your host, Mike Wilson. And on this episode of In the House, we're going to be talking about why sewer main lines fail. Jesse, you just make yourself comfortable. I'm going to. And let's go. Let's get this right here. Mm. It's my favorite right here. We need better chairs. Okay. What, What kind of chairs? Not this kind. See, you're one of those guys that I want to complain just, about it, but not present a solution. Yep, yeah. that's you. Yeah, no. How about we bring the chairs out of the, the world? Has room? enough people like you. Like, yeah. <laughs> what what kind of chairs do we need? How about just something that kind of conforms to the boote? Has a little curvature. Armrests. Armrests would be good. Reclining, massaging. Maybe, yeah. Maybe heated because this room's always cold. I I'm, think with social distancing, we have a couple. Well, here's the thing. I don't know what you think the budget is for this podcast but it is not well you're 97 this this why are you table, banging on that, the table the sturdiness of this table tells us what the, the budget is and I, it is good and like yet this table it is not good i keep trying to get them to add legs <laughs> yeah that helped we're not going off the pixel budget are we i like the pixel. i do yeah. too i'm just saying that it looks super dope it is super it looks like dope. super mario it is that's the play is the take we were well doing. well done Mm-hmm. Obviously, obviously. Uh, yeah. So anyone listening, if you would like to see us upgrade our chairs, um, we are looking for sponsors. Chasen's, um, you know, bottom <laughs> is uncomfortable. Mm. Yes. So there's that. Uh, and if you're wondering, In the House is a podcast about the major systems in the house. Electrical, plumbing, heating and air conditioning. Each week I'm joined by a panel of ex- well, I don't know about this week, yeah. but uh, ex- <laughs> it varies. <laughs> experts, we pick a topic and we discuss it in depth. It's meant to be informative and hopefully bring you some value from this point on. It'll bring you value, I hope. Like I said before, we're going to be talking about why sewer main lines fail. I've got Jesse and Chasen with me today. Uh, they're managers over the drains and sewer department at Any Hour Services. And for those that might not know, uh, tell me what a sewer main line is. Well, uh, do well, this, just, Jesse, that you've got the microphone facing this way. It needs to come up. Not, yeah, that, yeah. It needs to be when you're speaking. You need to be speaking into the mic, not over the mic, over, like that. Into the, all right, gotcha. Into, not Is over. that better? Yeah. As nice as these mic. I was doing a sound check. Yeah. Was all. But we did the sound check before the show started. Oh, but it sounded good when I was talking and over I, the mic. That's a and good not point. In the mic? Well, hang on. That's a good point, I'm Austin. So lost. You need to like catch those things before, like. Like the fact that he's like he this. changed it. He changed. He, he was did. talking good at first. And then Remember he when he made it. himself. That's a good point because he was he was like this. He's like, OK, check, check, check. And then he's like, who's going to accept the blame here? Because clearly nobody at this point. I'm OK. Uh. Oh, we need better <laughs> chairs. Yeah, that's about how it went. Oh, this is uncomfortable. <laughs> that was pretty good. <laughs> Except for Chasen was saying that. But you were like, I agree. You're, you're putting your own we're story together. We're, we're a team. Agreeing. We're one in the yeah, same. Yeah, you're. If I complain, it's your I'm complaint. writing my own story and my own podcast. And you're the hero of it. And Look, it's going way off the rails. I know you think that this is going to be a short episode and you're trying to just come <laughs> up with filler. But, okay, Jesse, what's a, what's a sewer main line? Right. So uh, a sewer main line, residential or commercial, that is the main waistline uh, that comes out of the building. I've got a big waistline. Yeah. You... <laughs> <laughs> Because I'm, I guess in that case it's not oh, that big. I feel stupid. It took me a long time to understand what you were saying there, but I'm yeah, with you. I'm fat. All right. So are we? Hey, are, what are we doing now? I have a phone number. You can waste lines, call. sewer lines. I don't know. Okay. Look, <laughs> you showed up really late. We, are we were ready really for the close. podcast, and then we we died. Oh man, yeah, we are getting really close to needing to start over. For all you, uh, for all you people that told Jason the show is too boring, take that. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, Jesse, what's a sewer main you know line? Who you are. <laughs> sewer main line is your main the main uh uh <laughs> I'm I'm lost now. It's the main Can line. We start this, over? Is, this is embarrassing. No, start. we're not the, starting over. Not. This is gold. <laughs> Unless you're actually trying to learn something. <laughs> what you our seven listeners? When you're ready. <laughs> I thought it was ninety seven. Yeah, it is <laughs> still <laughs> Yeah. I didn't get a single email from my <laughs> Over. <laughs> no, that's, so, that's too bad. Sewer main line is a is your main waste line that comes out of the house or a building. All all of your your all of your water drains into there. 
leaves the home in that one uh, three to six inch pipe, depending on age and, and, and how it was installed, who installed it. And it takes it to the city sewer line, which then continues to funnel down all the way to the city uh, sewage treatment plant. So, I mean, the episode we're supposed to be talking about why sewer main lines fail. So let's talk about the different ways that sewer main lines can fail. Uh, well, <clears throat> I mean, there's a lot. I mean, the most common uh, where in, in our area right now is is due to age and root penetrations or and things like that. But a lot of it has to do with age. Really? A lot of it has to do with age. And, and the age comes first. And then as the, the lines deteriorate, whether they're clay, concrete, transite, whatever, uh, once they deteriorate, then those joints start to open up, get a little loose after the ground's moved over 30 or 40 years, you know, whatever underneath the soil's doing its thing. Um, so is age being a factor uh, do more to the materials that were used 20, 30 years ago? Or is it that anything over time is just going to fail? Uh, both. And, and so there, there are some where, where the integrity of the actual pipe is not, not really affected by age. Uh, but the shifting in the joints and things like that as the ground moves over time and roots grow and things like that will move. And then they can penetrate inside those joints, which then starts to affect the integrity of those specific uh, 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 pipes. lines, pipes that of concrete, clay, and, and things like that. Now, cast iron has a pretty good life expectancy. However, age and running water definitely uh, affect a cast iron line. Well, let's start with this before we go to material. How much does uh, the quality of the installation play into how long it should last? Because with all of the other major equipment that we install in homes, there's a lot more moving mechanical pieces and the installation is a very important. They say it's the most important day in the life of any piece of equipment. Mm -hmm. How does that tie to main lines? You're you said it is is it is it's the most important, obviously, quality material you know, and, uh, but, uh, the quality of the install is the most important, you know, it, it, when you're installing it, you have complete control over what the line is laying on its slope, what's surrounded, you know, the type of material you're putting on top of it, the type of pressure you're putting on top of it, you know, how the joints go together or don't go together. Did you get them, you know, did you get them sealed up right? Or did you, you slip off a half an inch or whatever? Cause we go into new newer homes as well that have the updated, uh, plastic pipe. And the install is a very big factor on those with settling because it wasn't properly uh, compacted or they started throwing rocks on top of it instead of clean soil on top of it, denning it, cracking it, caving it in. And so the install is very important. And we, we go into a lot of older homes where clay and concrete and cast, they're 70, 80 year, years old. And the install was so good, they look really Don't bang good. on the table. Oh, sorry. So oh, these microphones are so good. Um, <laughs> they'll pick up you banging on the table, aren't. but if you chasing, we're back. Yeah. Focus, bro. This is going to be, I really am focused enough. on the chairs. <laughs> so, but we want to do, a <laughs> I find it funny that like the microphones pick up you banging on the table. But if you, if you do like that and Losing, all of a yeah. sudden, I don't know. I think my audio guys are just a little too picky. It could be. It could be. Austin, are you just too picky? Look at his chair. <laughs> he had, yeah. Wait, where did you get? Someone he changed stole, his chair. Someone what? stole my crappy chair inside. So just drag this big bad boy uh, over you here. You didn't think to drag one for the rest of us. Um, Let's go ahead. Oh, Let's, about being picky? Yeah. I mean, the mic. I what can I say? The mics pick up you guys banging on the table. It's connected to the table, so kind of like reverberates uh, up into the mic. Maybe we should sense. do a podcast on microphones. So if we talk no? onto okay. the table. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Use this logic against them, Jason. <laughs> okay. Um, but like I was saying, the install, older homes we go into, you know, Chasen's camera, you know, hundreds of lines. I've, I've cameraed hundreds of lines, and older, li older lines look really good if they were installed properly. And then age plays a part with, the particular homeowner building older and what they're actually putting down those lines, you know, just like anything else you take, whatever you take care of is going to last longer. Whatever you install properly is going to last longer. And there are some parts of it that, um, there's just no amount of insulation is going to solve. Um, insulation is absolutely like Jesse said, the most important, but think about a rubber band that has sat in the drawer for a couple of years 
and then you pull it out of there and it's not flexible anymore you, it just breaks yeah i mean a lot of the gaskets in some of those old clay lines mm -hmm. and things have very similar older style rubber that becomes brittle and hardened over time and so then the slightest little shift in the ground and it just breaks open mm. starts to let water out water gets into the ground around it there are trees in the in the neighborhood the grass above it i mean crabgrass is amazing how deep it'll go it finds that water in the soil and just follows it back to the source which is inside the pipe and then causes clogs and breaks and all kinds of things mm -hmm. well i think when people hear about roots in their main line they're thinking trees mm -hmm. but you're saying like crabgrass will yeah crabgrass will do it sometimes some of the most I, invasive I've, i found rosebush yeah that's where i was just gonna go rose bushes go really deep yep. and especially around where we're at we live in the desert and so things often have to go deeper to find the water they need mm. and then when they find a source that's giving it constant water as well as nourishment uh, then it it just tracks it and goes right in roots from rose bushes from uh, juniper bushes arborvita some of those other non typical tree things they're brutal on sewer lines what was that last one that you said arboritis arbor arborvita i had it right now you've got me all screwed up arborvita arborvita can yeah you, can you say the other term the, the opposite of that one what's the opposite of arborvita <laughs> that's what i'm saying i can't say it either <laughs> i don't even know what you're talking about those big tall green they use them for privacy fences a lot mm -hmm. oh i know what you're talking about yeah. now See, that's an arborvita mm -hmm. huh See, the things you have to learn to know about sewer lines. Horticulturalists. Uh -huh. Okay, so uh, we talked about quality of the installation. So if you have a poor install, it's not going to last as long. What are some other common uh, reasons that those main lines fail? Oh, <clears throat> common, I mean, common is, it depends on what type you type of pipe you're talking about. So let's let's just start with cast iron. Okay. Okay. And so we'll go cast iron, which is usually underneath the building. Uh, sometimes it extends outside the building, the house or the building. Um, and those ones, they get their life expectancy goes down really quick when you get them out into the minerals and stuff like that. But when they're underneath the home, the home has gravel and a base and everything that they put the concrete on. So it's, it's not, there's not as many minerals or rich of an environment for roots and things like that. But cast iron's metal and the water runs down the same bottom center of that pipe year after year after year and if you know anything about water water usually eventually wins or penetrates or wears something away and so that's usually what happens there so most common for cast most common for cast is uh is wear and tear it really is wear and tear unless unless somebody you know runs a kitchen or does a lot of cooking and is stuffing a lot of or running a lot of um uh uh, grease, oil, fats. Grease, oil, fats. The word I was looking for was... Uh, Arborvitus. If you can get one down there, good for you. Mm -hmm. So, but... I've seen it. <laughs> but uh, like uh, liquid plumber, things that are... Gotcha. Burn. What was the word? Thank you. The chemicals, thank you. <laughs> the more chemicals you run down, it, it makes a big difference in your cast iron. So mm -hmm. that would be the most common for cast iron. And to add to cast iron, the little spoken about part of it is the static electricity. You got water running over top of it creating friction and friction makes static and metal reacts to any sort of electricity, including static electricity. And you run into things called galvanic corrosion or uh, electrolysis and it weakens joints. It weakens the material of the pipe. That static can do a lot on it too. Hmm. What ages, like what, what range of dates did they use um, cast iron. Cast iron has been used for a very long time. There are applications for it even still today. Uh, some commercial buildings, things like that, I have to have cast iron by code um, of above a certain size and things. Um, but cast iron, they really widely, it was stopped in the late, late 70s into 1980 is when we switched to mostly plastic. Now above ground, um, it was more around 1970. They started using the plastics that we use now, the ABS and PVC and things, um, but they didn't yet trust it enough to put it underground, so they stuck with the cast iron, which was a big mistake. Um, and so starting from 1970 to 80, you'll have plastic above ground, cast iron underground, and then about 1980, you'll see mostly plastic everywhere. Hmm. So how long before that did they use cast iron? For a very long time, into the late 1800s even. Um, there's... Uh, sometimes they use wood before that, and they've used a lot of different things. Now, Utah's a new enough area in terms of when it was settled and everything that we don't see much before cast iron, if any. Um, but so basically around here, everything we see is going to be cast iron or plastic underground. Hmm. 
Okay. Uh, what are some other what are some other failure points that you see here? Well, if you so now you're going to leave the house and you're going to you're going to jump into several different types of pipe you got, uh, which is real common around here: clay and concrete. Okay, uh, transite, uh, and then you have Orangeburg, which is really the one you don't want to find yourself with. Okay. So okay, let me back you up there for a second. You said, and now you leave the house. So are you saying that? Um, there's not usually cast iron outside of the house. That's it's inside underneath it, the yep, ground. It'll yeah. stretch out past the foundation of the house till the end of that stick when they installed it, usually two to 10 feet. And then it will transition to one of those others that Jesse oh, just mentioned. Okay. Mm -hmm. I did not, I didn't pick that up. Gotcha. When you first Maybe I didn't explain, explain it right. So yeah, you probably did. Well, here probably we are. Did. Now you know. Chasing a great job. So now you're outside the home. <laughs> well, I mean, I, we're leaving the cast hang on, iron. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang <laughs> on. I feel like I did a pretty good job, like trying to like translate what all you. Oh, were you saying. did absolutely, and you know, so yeah, don't, top don't get chasing all of top shelf, we'll, top shelf. We'll for get sure. you a box of cookies after this. Chips Ahoy thin, thin, yeah, good choice. Have you had the thin Oreos? No, I don't. Oh, don't start. I I will say that I probably would like those better than the big ones because if you like dipping your cookies in milk, uh, yeah, I've found that the most thinner people. ones like. They absorb better. better milk. Yeah. And there's less of the fluff. The fluff. The, mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. There's some people that like, some people are on team mega stuff. And some people are on the team stuffing. I'm a cookie the, guy myself. Mm. I think if you put them both together, you're doing good. Chips Ahoy and, or. Now like, Chips Ahoy with chocolate chips or with M&Ms. I like the chocolate chips, but I would go M&Ms if they came in the thin. Because when you talk about M&Ms, I love an M&M blizzard. Chips Ahoy is not a sponsor of the podcast. If you'd like to be, please email Mike Wilson at mike.wilson at anyhourservices.com. My man. Mm. So, uh, cookies. How did we get to cookies? I don't know. I think I'm you're glad hungry. We did. Both of you might be hungry. I think so. Well, I mean, have you seen me? I'm hungry most of the time. <laughs> Your waistline. My waistline. You don't look hungry. <laughs> <laughs> what? You look like you've already eaten a lot. Mm. Mm. Walked into that one. Mm -hmm. I should feel bad, but I don't. <laughs> he's feeling pretty good about himself because he's losing weight. I'm on a slippery slope. Man. Are you really? You on a yeah. diet? Not on purpose, but yeah. Are you sick? No, just not good at stopping to eat. Hmm. I have the opposite effect. My body says, "Bro, you Bro, need to let's do this. Chill you out. Need to slow down." <laughs> I don't know if I'm just hypoglycemic or whatever, but like, I start to like get low blood sugar and shaky, and like when I see people. I start to get eat, like angry, angry, oh, yeah. angry. Yeah. I know, but like I'm just saying that like your body is not doing that to you. So there's either something wrong with my body or something wrong with yours. Or both. I would say there's probably something more wrong with mine because when you look at us and compare us, <laughs> you definitely look <laughs> healthier than I am. Right. So well, I guess you've got the great. If I too. had to choose, I would I would rather have not have that addiction to food. I'm sure we could find a phone number you could call. Nope. Uh, that's the thing is I don't really want help. I, <laughs> the other thing is I don't know how we got here. I do. I just remembered how okay, we got there. Good, because I'm you just guys here were thinking doing about a it. really bad job teaching us about this stuff, and I did a really great job of, ex oh, and then of the box translating. Of and you were like cookies, okay. and then okay, yeah, we're chips back. ahoy. <sighs> okay, so we explained the cast iron so we're in a the different house. type of pipe outside so now so cast iron in the house underground most of the time in utah now you have different pipes outside of the house what are the failure points because honestly like i think of the main line and maybe it's just because i'm in it a little too much being in the industry i think of the main line as the stuff outside of the house but i guess yes and it, you're not it continues under the yeah you're not totally wrong that Typically, or technically, it's not considered the main line until everything has tied in. Mm -hmm. And that quite often doesn't, that last joint for something else tying into it doesn't often happen until the very end of the inside of the house. And so most of the main line is outside the house. Okay. And that's why we see so many clay, concrete pipes that we're having to deal with um, is because most of those problems occur outside. Hmm. Okay. Sorry. So let's now we'll focus outside. Let's talk about why those main lines outside of the house fail? What are the most common reasons? Um, well, many of them are the same common reason. And so as Jason was talking about uh, the gaskets, so your, your clay and concrete, and I, I believe transite as well, 
Correct me if I'm wrong, right? Uh, it's a yep. coupling instead of a bell, but right. it does have a gasket. Do, same thing. In that, so those will those fail, which allows the separation of the joints. Once the separation of the joint happens, now it's just downhill from there. Water's in, water's out, roots are in, and then they climb down, and, and they start putting pressure on the pipe, pushing it down, lifting it up, um, or eventually caving it in. But So all of them are subject to that. Uh, when it comes to clay... Um, at concrete and even transite, you're, you're going to have root issues once they open. And so that's another real common one, it very, very, especially where we're at, because we have a lot of trees around here. We have bench areas, even out in the, the valley area, we get trees everywhere. Cities love to plant trees in the, in the right of ways and things like right that. And on they, top of the sewer lines. Yeah. It's, and so, uh, everywhere you go in you, it, well, in our area in Utah, you'll, that's going to be a high probability. So roots are a failure, probably the most common. Yeah, most and common. The misconception is that roots caused the failure. Right. And but really, all they do is exacerbate an existing problem of the pipe is no longer sealed up. So roots aren't a problem unless they can get into if they're the inside pipe. the pipe. They're a problem. Outside the pipe, they're fine. As long as that pipe stays sealed and no water's coming out, they they have no reason to attack it. Mm. It's when they find a water source coming out of that pipe that they follow it in. And so the opening in the pipe is the real problem. Got it. And that occurs from age, poor installation. Mm -hmm. The other mm -hmm. thing about the outside pipe is that the inside pipes, above ground, below ground. Now, when you say they, inside pipes, you're talking inside the house? Inside the house. Okay. Yep. Um, so inside the house, the stuff that is above the ground and the stuff below the ground, it's not exposed to as much as the stuff outside is in terms of the elements and things like that. When you've got a pipe under the ground out where sprinkler water, rainwater, everything, groundwater, it all gets to it. So it's not only being worked on from the water inside the pipe, it's also got water outside the pipe working on it as well. Yeah, and so it's kind of got double-ended attack coming there and it wears down a little quicker in most cases. Mm. Um, and so you have uh, a lot more factors going into it. And when you're talking about metal pipes, um, the minerals in the ground, we really don't talk about a whole lot, but they, especially in, in terms of water lines mostly, but it does happen to sewer lines as well. Um, there's certain areas, even here in Utah, there's pockets of a ton of different metals and stuff as part of the soil. And they actually react with the metal pipes and cause them to break down quicker. Okay. And so it, there's just a lot of different factors to what causes it to fail. Gotcha. So roots are, uh, uh, the most common thing here. Uh, let's talk about, uh, Let's see, what's more common, uh, bellies or misalignments? They quite often go hand in hand. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and the cause is usually similar. Uh, installation goes to both of them. Let's let's stop and define both of those first. Explain yeah. what a belly is and then explain so what misalignment sewer is. sewer lines rely entirely on gravity for them to function properly. There are times where there's a pump and things like that, but in 99% of cases, it's all gravity fed. And Meaning so you have to It has to go downhill. It at a slope yep and higher that, at one point lower at the other exactly so the top of the pipe is always supposed to be higher than the bottom of the pipe and it's got a slope consistently and gradually all the way down uh, the typical slope is two percent meaning for every foot that it travels it's got to drop a quarter of an inch um, and so if it doesn't do that you end up with the belly if there's a section where that pipe isn't going downhill and it has to climb back up a little bit you have a low spot in that pipe sag a dip whatever you want to call it and you have water that's constantly standing right there in that low point because it has to climb uphill and gravity is no longer helping the sewer system now it's hurting it as the water falls back into that low spot so then when you have things go down the line poop toilet paper all that kind of stuff rather than just following the water downhill it hits into this pool of water it's like going down a water slide uh, you go down a water slide and at the bottom of it they have a big pool there because that standing water stops you from continuing same thing happens in the sewer line when things are coming down that line with the water it hits that pool of water and that little dip that belly and it stops right there most of the time water's going to come through and flush it through but at some point and eventually and inevitably enough solid stuff's going to stop right there to cause a blockage and mm -hmm. that just compounds over time because you get one thing that stops that's going to slow things Catches down something and else. then it just piles exactly. up exactly and then the other thing is that belly will, in most cases, continue to get deeper and deeper and deeper as it sags more and more. Because as you, you, ha you have all these joints in the pipe, clay being the most common, it's usually in four foot pieces of pipe. So every four feet you have a joint. And as that pipe sags and it's not put in there straight anymore, it's actually pulling that joint open. So then it's letting water leak out and the water leaking out will erode the soil underneath the belly. 
and cause that belly to get deeper and deeper and deeper and then become even more of a problem. Uh, so that's bellies in a nutshell. Okay. And misalignments yep. are in those joints that are every four feet in terms of, well, clay, it's four feet. Ca concrete varies, but often it's only two feet. Um, transite is 10 feet. Um, and so you have different points, but there's joints in all of them. And in a misalignment, you'll have one of those joints is not butted up perfectly straight with each other anymore. And sometimes it happens at installation. Sometimes it's from the shifts and the settling where now you'll have them not lined up and there'll be actually a lip um, where so everything comes screaming down that pipe and it'll hit that bump in it. And you end up with, again, more solids getting stuck there that then catch more solids and more solids until you have a blockage. And it has the same issue of water also leaking out through that misalignment and increasing how far off they are. As a visual, if you can imagine uh, if you've ever been walking down a sidewalk and mm -hmm. you have one section of the sidewalk that like lifts up and there's like a little lip and you see sometimes people, maybe you've been the one that trips on it or, on but a like, scooter. or, or exactly. Yeah. But like the water flowing down there, it has now a speed bump and something that can like stop it. And the water all of a sudden has a speed bump. And as things, same thing with the belly, as things like pile up there, they can build up over time. Okay. Um, okay. So you said that they go hand in hand. Now that we've defined those, what, how do they go hand in hand? So the, the hand in hand part is the cause is often the same and that's insulation or settling in the soil. Um, and then there loses its support. And so then they, they either offset or the whole, they, or both joints will slip and you'll have the belly. Um, and then what they do in terms of continuing forward, they do the same thing. That's letting water out, increasing that problem. Um, and so the cause of both of them is similar. The only difference really is did one piece of pipe shift or did both pieces of pipe shift at that joint? And then you either have a belly or an offset. So if joints are such a problem, how come we don't install solid pipe? You know, we, we can do. now. Yeah. We, Back do now. Technology. Well, we can, but we still don't. The difference comes in how the joints are formed now. When we use the big thing is it, you got to be able to transport whatever you're putting in there. Transporting a hundred foot piece of pipe is a very difficult thing. Yeah, but like there's that technology where it like like heat welds it together, mm -hmm. you know? fusing. Yeah, yeah, and that's something we do a lot of in terms of what's called a sewer burst, which is a replacement method where you pull a pipe through, and then you do fuse them together on site um, and pull it through in one. But I mean, solid is piece. it a cost? prohibited process like is the it's material? a material process so hdpe is the type of pipe that you fuse together you melt the two pieces you put them together mm -hmm. and then that joint actually bonds tighter than the wall of the pipe itself yep um but with most of what we use being pvc and there's reasons for it to be pvc cost is one of them uh strength durability all those things are part of it another is most of the cities do prefer that pipe to be a green material so that if anybody's ever digging or anything like that, they come across it, they know what it is. Um, and HDPE is black. Um, and so there's different reasons. Seems but like you could solve that with a little bit of dye. <laughs> I guess. But then you go back to cost. Uh, it's very expensive to do things food like that. Food coloring is so cheap. It is, but f it's food coloring, not plastic coloring. I and really don't, think, plastic I, I really is don't think they're buying them off the same shelf space at <laughs> yeah, Walmart. I think, I think really it's a little don't. different. Fair enough. I think it's a little <laughs> different. Um, but uh, the joints in the PVC now are very different from the joints in the clay and the concrete and things. Uh, several differences. One of them being the gap left with no gasket. In a clay or uh, concrete line, they were made dirt tight. Their goal was to keep dirt out of the pipe. And so they quite often had a quarter to a half inch gap between what's called the bell end opening. One end of each piece of pipe opens up wider so that the next piece can slide into it. Um, that gap's filled with that gasket that we were talking about. Um, in PVC, they are watertight. And so you actually have to bevel um, thin one end of the next piece of pipe in order for it to even fit into that joint because they're so tight. And then rather than overlapping three or four inches, they overlap eight to 10 inches. Mm. Um, and so then the gasket's different inside as well. Um, but there's differences in how they're joined together now. And so that's with new material installation is even more of a factor than with the old material. As long as the new materials are installed properly, they're going to last far longer. Hmm. Um, if someone is a homeowner and their home is over X amount of age, like what age should people like worry about the condition of their pipe? Assuming that it was 
Well, I guess you can't always assume that it was installed properly. Mm. Our experience actually looking at things is that <laughs> most of them weren't. <laughs> most of them weren't. So let's just pick an age. So if a, if a customer's home is how old? Yeah. So that's like we were talking earlier with when we switched materials. So if you're pre-1980, chances are you've got at least cast iron somewhere in your system. Um, and that's where it becomes an issue. But the real overall encompassing answer with sewer lines, ignorance is bliss. Yeah, and so most people wait until there's a problem, till there's signs of a problem, a backup, anything like that. And honestly, if it's me and I'm dealing with my sewer line, I'm not going to worry a whole lot about it unless it gives me a reason to. Yeah, because if it's working great, it's meant to not be maintained. It's not something you're supposed to have to think about checking on every year. Um, and so if it gives you a problem, that's when you need to start looking at it. But I, I guess for people that are that want to be proactive, that don't even want to have the hassle of a problem because from, for most people, don't those things just kind of happen suddenly? It's like, yeah. boom, all of a sudden yeah, you is. got crap in your basement. So pre 1980, anything after 1980 is going to be PVC and, and going to last longer if it was put in right. So if your home is over 30, 40 years old, um, and you are curious about having it checked out, what do they do? How, how can you, um, inspect the condition or can you well to give to give a to give anybody a starting point like chase was saying he's not gonna do anything unless the sewer gives him a reason to your sewer's not going to back up on you unless you have a problem so if you've had some kind of issue you want to inspect it with a proper camera okay now in that camera inspection if the integrity of the pipe anywhere is gone as in separation joints cracks uh, root penetrations or anything like that you now are on the downhill side. It will never. It's just a matter of it's time. It's just a matter of time. It never heals itself. There's no tool, you know, you know, cables and jetters, as we talked about in past, uh, in in past podcasts. You cannot reverse that. And so, once you have, once the integrity of your pipe, whether it's inside the home, outside the home, you, it's time to start thinking about it. And so, then comes in the trenchless options, which we also talked about, which reduce the cost of permanent repair versus wait until it completely fails on you. Okay. So I guess for me, cause I'm, I'm not like you, like the chasing as far, like I wouldn't wait for a problem if it's me. Like I am much, I don't want to be inconvenienced by anything <laughs> in life. And that's probably why yeah, I, you know, take when Including you hungry. hungry. You don't want to be <laughs> <Right>? hungry. <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I don't want the inconvenience. We both said that at the same time. It like, seems like <laughs> eating is more of an inconvenience than just being kind of hungry. Should we go to lunch after? Um, I'm always down have, to eat, but like, I have a meeting. So <laughs> I'm feeling like a 10 piece nugget and surprise. Hit some Taco Bell before they quit selling potatoes. You know what? Mm. With oh man, I was, tr I was trying to wrap the episode. Mm. No, and then we gotta now talk I've about got potatoes a, at Taco Bell. Now I mm. wasn't going to talk about the potatoes at Taco Bell, but like that 10 piece nugget, like you go and you get like a McDouble and a 10 piece nugget, put them together. And on the McDonald's app, I don't know if it's just like learned my like it eating has. habits, <laughs> but like, Every single day, I've got a dollar French fry that I could like use, um, and so boom for like less than four bucks, you can get a really good sized meal. You well, can. And then you throw mine, some mine sweet and sour sauce on that hamburger, and then put the nuggets in it, and then put the bun stop, back on. Stop, because oh, here's the thing. Man. Here, okay, so there are people that like to mix those flavors together. Like a very common thing is, I'm not going to say the name of the sandwich that I've heard, but you Smart. take a McDouble and you take the <laughs> spicy McChicken and you put those together, you uh -huh. know, remove the top buns and oh, yeah. or bottom, whatever, and you yep, put them yep. together. Someone convinced me to try that. And I was not as blown away as okay. they were. Let me convince you of another. A spicy chicken. Okay. Remove the top bun. Then do the sweet and sour sauce and the nuggets on the chicken. So it's chicken and chicken. You're not mixing animals here. Chicken and chicken. Put the bun back on. Give that a shot. I would. I wouldn't add the chicken nuggets. It seems. Uh, well, then you're missing the whole point. Excessive. No, because the, 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 the chicken sandwich excessive. is the whole chicken nugget. Weren't we just talking nugget. about how much it's you like to eat? What's excessive? <laughs> okay. Well, you just stop that conversation <laughs> cold. All right. Okay. So back to this what i was going to say is if your home's over 30 40 years old contact someone uh, and have them run a camera down like i if i'm moving into a house i'm gonna check the sewer line very wise you know because that, that seems like one of the most in that, to me a sewer line backing up in the basement 
is even worse than like a water heater flooding because yeah. water heater flooding, at least it's water, you know, yeah. mm-hmm. but in the sewer line backing up, it's water and a lot of other things. Poop. And and you bring up a good, <laughs> <laughs> it's those spicy chicken sandwiches oh, yeah. after the fact. <laughs> With sweet and sour sauce. Um, that, that <laughs> flavor is all gone by then and, and, and the aroma. That's and we're deal. done. That's a big deal. <laughs> so we're wrapping this baby. No, <laughs> I'm trying nah. to, but y'all just keep going back. Uh, sorry. The, that is one of the, the biggest uh, and, and most costly damaging things is a sewer backup because of what the sewage contains mm-hmm. versus a clean water or fresh water treated backup. So, yeah. Any Anything else about uh, main lines failing before we wrap this episode? Uh, we didn't talk about Orangeburg. If you have oh, Orangeburg, Orangeburg, just move just uh, move towards replacement. Get out. But yep. I think that that kind of goes, no one's going to know unless they tell get it like checked it, out. Right. But if you camera it, can you tell that it's Orangeburg? Oh, yeah. Somebody who knows what they're looking at can. Okay. Yeah. And, so, and we should spend a minute on Orangeburg. Yeah, it's common enough. Because the failures are different. It is different. Common it's a, failures it's a problem all its own. Orangeburg is a pipe made out of tar paper, the black tar paper they put underneath the shingles on a roof. Uh, it's that same stuff just rolled up into a pipe and it just breaks apart. It's garbage. And so then you got the water in the water outside of it, everything, it just breaks down and we see roots literally punch right through the wall Hmm. of, of Orangeburg pipe, or you'll see where the layers of it from it being rolled, the water will get in between the layers and create bubbles and that'll give you a backup. And then you go run an auger down it and you tear the thing to pieces. Orangeburg is another one. It's, it's one you really can't repair. You can't patch into Orangeburg because all of the when you're connecting one type of pipe to a different type of pipe all the fittings are clamp fittings and you clamp those down on orangeburg and it just collapses underneath and so like uh, jesse said a minute ago if you have orangeburg just start planning on replacing the whole thing yeah you it's because it's paper you know you you have to be very delicate if you're running cables and jetters down it which is kind of uh, counterintuitive because you're counting on the aggressiveness of those tools in the other pipes to clear that blockage and you cannot be aggressive in Orangeburg. It's paper. You'll blow through the side and then you got a cable or a jetter stuck that you're now you're forced to do something. And so it's, that's one of those things you need to look at and just, you know, move forward with whatever needs to be done. Okay. So if your home is over 30, 40 years old, uh, we recommend having the sewer line inspected so that you at least know, what material you're using, the condition of it, and you have a heads up uh, because if, if it is starting to show signs of deterioration and things like that, you may not necessarily have to replace it right then, but if it's going to be, you know, several thousand dollars to take care of this problem, I personally would like to have a heads up so that I can start like planning and preparing for that because there's the only thing worse than a backup is finding out that it's like super expensive and you weren't planning on that particular repair and having to make it. So anyway, thanks guys for being on the show. Mm -hmm. That's, that's our show today. We'll be back next Tuesday with a new episode of in the house. If you'd like to know more about any hour services, go to any hour services.com. I've been your host, Mike Wilson, and you've been listening to in the house. house. I was wondering if you guys would do that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So yeah, came up with it. Yes. Look, why are you always trying to take credit for everything? I just give it where it's due. (laughs) I can't including himself. All right. See you guys. (laughs)